And bear with me, I'm still fighting my cold. My cough hasn't quite left. So homework from lesson five, number seven, which I like. It says a proton is accelerated from V equals that many volts to V equals that many volts. Uh huh. There you go, sir. <laughs> Miguel, what's number seven asking me to find? Okay. As soon as they start talking about speed in this unit, I start thinking I'm going to solve this using energies. I'm going to solve this by going kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. I think we're starting from rest, so I'm fairly sure I can do that. When we're talking about point charges, potential energy is no longer MGH. It's electric potential energy. But when they give me the voltage, so you have your formula sheet in front of you. I hope you do. By the way, I hope all of you have your formula sheet in front of you. It'll be really, really handy. Can you find me the equation for uh, EP, potential energy? Now, that one I would use if I had two charges. Are there two charges in this question? Find another equation that has PE in it or EP in it. Not change in velocity. Change in what? Okay. Potential energy is, although if you want the potential energy at one location, you can just do that. In other words, I'm going to take this equation here, and I'm going to rewrite it as, I'll scroll up a little bit here, oh, too far, QV initial equal, that's potential energy initial, a half mv final squared plus qv final. I got a problem here, and Miguel, you actually actually kind of tumbled onto it. Initially, you didn't call it voltage on the formula sheet. What did you call it initially? The fact that I have multiple v's here, my physics prof when I was in college, he said since voltage is capital V, but you can't really tell a capital V from a lowercase v when you're writing in a hurry, he always put little wings on his capital V's, and I'm going to start doing that from now on. He put little horizontal bars. That's a capital V for voltage. I'm going to do that for the rest of this unit. Okay. Do I know the charge? Proton. What's the charge on a proton? Do I know my initial voltage? 300? Do I know the mass of a proton? Oh, 1.67, that's, that's not the charge on a proton. Okay, by the way, the number that you read me, does, isn't there a kilograms next to it? Yeah, let's not do that. It's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 is the charge on a proton. <coughs> I guarantee it does not. You're looking at kilograms. You're telling me the mass of charge. Okay. Hey, folks, first day back, five people late. Come on. I know one person had a legitimate excuse. Can I go back to here now? What's the charge on a proton? Sorry? I can't hear you. Speak louder. No, no, the whole charge. You need to find it on your sheet. Yes, it's the elementary charge. That's what it's called on your sheet. And you all need to know that because I, I will not help you on a test. In fact, I will mock you mercilessly if when we get to the test you find that you are unable to get the charge. Okay, so 1.6 times 10 to negative 19. Initial voltage, 300. Where am I? 300. Mass of a proton. It's on your sheet. What? I have no idea what you're saying. You need to find it and speak louder. I think it's called mass of a proton. Yes. V is what I'm trying to find. What's the charge on a proton? Final voltage is 200. 
So what I would do first of all is I'm going to minus this over. Q V initial minus Q V final equals one half M V final squared. And I've told you I'll put the wings on the capital V for voltage so I can tell the difference. Do you want me to keep going or can you take it the rest of the way yourself? Okay. And this we'll be talking about a lot more in the next couple of days as well. Is that all right? Any others from the homework? Yep. Yep. So I'm going to erase all this. Is that okay, Miguel? Do you have lesson five? Oh, sorry. Okay. What do they want us to find? Who asked the number nine? Adam, what do they want us to find? I like this question. I like this question. What do they want us to find, by the way, 9A? Okay. Remember, potential is another word for voltage. And I know it's easy to get potential mixed up with potential energy. It's not. <laughs> What's the equation for potential from a point charge? The equation for potential, or for voltage, is K over R. They want the total. What does the word total imply? What mathematical operation when they say total them up? I think I'm going to call this charge A. I'm going to call this charge B. I'm going to find the voltage at charge from charge A. I'm going to find the voltage from charge B. And then I'm going to add them up. Okay? This is going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th. 1, uh, oh, 1 whole coulomb. So not 1 times 10 to the anything. 1 whole coulomb. That's a huge charge. It would probably kill you. All over, the distance is 2 meters. I think you get 4.5 times 10 to the 9th. That I can do in my head. It's going to be 9 divided by 2. B, now voltage is a scalar. So it's still going to be the same equation, 9 times 10 to the 9th. But the charge here is negative 2. And we said for scalars, you put the signs in all over a distance of 1. I'm going to get negative 1.8 times 10 to the 10th, I believe. Volts and volts. The total voltage is going to be 4.5 times 10 to the 9th plus negative 1.8 times 10 to the 10th. The net, the overall, the total voltage there is negative 1.35 times 10 to the 10th. There's a negative voltage there. What does B want us to find? Now, I could go putting that charge right there, and I could go KQ1, Q2 over R, KQ1, Q2 over R, and add them up. But because I know the total voltage right there, the shortcut is going to be, why don't I just go QV? Complete with the wings now, so that Miguel can tell this is voltage and not velocity. And you're not the only one. Someone always does that mistake, by the way, and I always bring up the notation right now. It's going to be Q, uh, 0.23 times 10 to the negative 6. Voltage, negative 1.35 times 10 to the 10th. And that should give you negative 3.1 times 10 to the, negative th to the positive 3 joules. Why negative? Oh, it's telling you if you wanted to move it out to infinity, you'd have to do work. It wants to stay there. Which makes sense because even though this positive charge is repelling it, it's closer to this bigger negative charge. It really wants to fall as opposed to fly away. Is that okay? 
Now, the fact that these are at angles because voltage and energy are scalars, who cares? That's the beauty. Any others? Really getting the vibe that people haven't done much of the homework. I, I'll warn you one last time. You can't cram this unit. Uh, nine total, so four more. And on that note, Taylor, you've given us a lovely segue into lesson six. So far, we have been talking about point charges. One charge sending out either an electric field or a voltage. Miguel, the problem with point charges is the electric field is constantly changing because remember, the electric field depended on how far you were away. The further you went away, the smaller the field, and that makes for yucky math. What we would love to find is a situation where we could have a nice constant electric field, Nick, so the math was nicer. And there is such a situation. It's between parallel metal plates. And so today we're going to look at parallel plates and some of their properties. Another important voltage problem is the parallel plates problem. If you have a large, flat metal plate and you charge them up using a power supply, uh, circuits, this is the symbol for a battery. We'll be doing circuits next unit, but I'm going to introduce some of the symbolism now. The long bar is always the positive bar. The short bar is always the negative bar. So when we're doing circuit diagrams, that's how you know which one's positive, which one's negative. And so if we hooked a battery up to two parallel plates, this would have a net positive charge, and this would have a net negative charge. Electrons would gather over here, and protons would gather over here. Normally they would repel each other, but this battery is forcing them to be gathering this way and forcing them to be moving this way. If the metal plates are very large, how large? Yeah. Oh, yay. Not huge, like I'm not talking room size, but hand size. As it turns out, we get a very, very nice property. We find that the voltage varies directly with the distance from the plates. Say what? Let me say that again. It turns out that the voltage varies directly as the distance from the plates. For example, if you knew that this was a 300 volt battery, which means this is 300 volts and this is zero. If you were to, now remember, there's a bunch of positive charges here. Each of them is throwing out an electric field. There's a bunch of negative charges here. Each of them is throwing out an electric field. And because they're each throwing out an electric field, that must mean that if you put a charge right there, it would want to move, either fall up or fall down, depending on whether it was negative or positive. So it has energy. And since voltage is energy per coulomb, there must be a voltage. If you measured the voltage exactly halfway, you would find that the voltage was exactly 150 volts. If you measured the voltage halfway between the plates. So let's add one more measurement, Erwin. Let's say that this distance here is 3 centimeters. If you went 1.5 centimeters, you know what your voltage would be? 150, right there if you measured it at that location. Oh, if you went 1 centimeter, you know what your voltage would be? Think about it. 100. 100 volts. If you go 2 centimeters, you know how many volts you've gone through? 200. It's a direct one-to-one -one linear relationship. So let's imagine that we have plates separated by 5 millimeters, not very far, and charged to 500 volts. It says, make a graph of voltage versus, versus distance from the lower plate. So if we start at 0 volts, and we move up one millimeter, since this total distance is five millimeters, and the total voltage is 500. Evan, it turns out that each millimeter is going to be 100 volts. In other words, at one millimeter, I would be at 100 volts. At two millimeters, I would be at 200 volts. 
at 3 millimeters, I would be at 300. At 4 millimeters, I would be at 400. At 5 millimeters, I would be at 500. If I were to graph this, we would get that lovely slope right there. What is the slope? Can someone go rise over run? What's my rise? 500 volts. What's my run? I'm going to go 0 0.005 meters because it's millimeters. What do you get? Ten thousand? You think it ten ten thousand? Or one thousand? Or a hundred thousand? Hundred thousand. There we go. Volts per meter. Missing a zero? Sorry. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Can't read my own writing. Um, I want to look at these units here. I'm going to do that right here. Volts, we said, was joules per coulomb. So volts per meter is joules per coulomb per meter. So far so good? Uh, where do I want to go with this, Mr. Duick? Volts per meter, volts or joules per coulomb per meter. Yeah, that works. Okay, I see where we're going. Um, how do I divide by a fraction? Okay, when I tidy these up, this is really joules per coulomb, and the meter ends up on the bottom. Big deal. Well, I want to tailor, look at this. What do I measure joules with? What's a, what do I measure in joules? Energy. What do I measure in uh, meters? Okay. So I'm going to say this. Also, work equals force times distance. Remember that? Force equals work over distance. What units do I measure work in? Uh, Taylor, yes. What units do I measure distance in? So what is joules per meter actually a measure of? In fact, this is really newtons per coulomb. Ah, hey, hey, newtons per coulomb. We spent the whole day looking at something that's measured in newtons per coulomb. What do I measure in newtons per coulomb? Matt, as it turns out, the slope of this is going to be the electric field. Kind of a bizarre, hey, where the heck did that come from? But that's going to be really, really nice. We find that for parallel plates, there is a constant ratio of voltage drop over distance. If you're twice as far, you're at twice the voltage. And this ratio is the electric field. Even better, Ian. Was the, was the slope a nice straight line or was it a curve? Which means the electric field is constant. It's a not changing slope. 
So earlier, Miguel, I said the problem with electric field with point charges is as soon as you move anywhere, the electric field is always changing. It leads to yucky math. It leads to curvy graphs like we had in gravity. It leads to stuff that we can't do without calculus. However, we can set up a very easy situation where we have nice, uniform, constant electric field. Put two metal plates parallel to each other, not very far apart, reasonably big metal plates, so not little microscopic ones. The electric field is thus uniform inside the plates and is given by voltage difference over plate separation. You all got your formula sheets out? I think you also, I believe, have this one. Electric field equals that. Do you? Is it written like that or do they have the voltage by itself? Do they have voltage equals ed? Okay, electric field equals change in voltage, the difference between the top and the bottom, divided by how far apart the plates are. And it's also a vector. But this one is a little bit easier to figure out. Now, how did we figure out the direction for electric field? We asked ourselves a question, what? Which way would a positive want to move if it could? So if I'm a little positive charge right there, which way do I want to move? Down, definitely. Because the negatives are pulling me down, and the protons are repelling me down. I'm, I'm really moving down. This little gizmo, this little gadget here, actually was for quite a while the basis behind most of the technology from the 50s and 60s. This is the uh, idea behind a TV screen, believe it or not. A TV screen, not the LCD, not the LED, not the plasma, so not the new ones, but the old style TV screens, the ones that from the side look like that, like and had the big that it's a cathode ray tube, it's an electron gun, and the reason they're long is you needed long parallel plates in there. Okay. You can deflect electrons, and we're gonna talk about how that all works. It's actually a very simple technology as it turns out. It worked great for 40 years. So between parallel plates, I have that. Now how can I keep this one straight from my other electric field equation? So see the other electric field equation on your formula sheet, Nick, in the top, I think it's the top right one? Has that got a little Q in it? Yeah, okay, Q is point charge. The second electric field equation, which is, I think, right below it, yeah? Is it? I'm going from memory here, but yes, that's also electric field. It's got an E. Uh, do you see a point charge anywhere in this equation here? You see a distance, not a radius. That's also our way of saying it's not a point charge. And voltage. So, you ready? What kind of questions can we ask you? Example two, find the electric field, magnitude, and direction inside the plates. Set up, my friend or I shall yell again. So electric field, now I have to ask myself a pre-question before I solve this. Am I dealing with points or plates? Okay, by the way, if you look at your formula sheet, top row, points, point charges. Bottom row, I think also point charges, there's Q's and R's, yes? Middle row, both. Some of those can be used for point charges. Specifically, the QB equals energy one can be used. Uh, but uh, th there's also plate ones. Okay? So electric field is voltage divided by the distance. Can you all look up for a second? It's actually change in voltage. And I'll do my wings for Miguel because I forgot to put those there. Um, what's the change in voltage here? Yeah, this is almost never the case. And what I mean by that is almost always this will be maybe positive 300 and this would be positive 525. We can never really get stuff down to zero. Most circuits, there's charges on both plates, but the net charge is saying this is more negative than that one. What's my change in voltage here still? 225, okay? So often you'll see a diagram like that. Or what you might see, Taylor, is a diagram where this is 0 and this is negative 225 because I've told you 
the negative charges, the electrons. We can move those around really easy. Can we really move the protons around? No, we're going to pretend we can't have them, but they're stuck inside the nuclei of atoms. They're, they're not going anywhere. And you've already heard me say, Evan, Ben Franklin named them wrong. You should have named the electrons the positives because they're the ones that are moving. Oh, well, we're stuck with them. So the electric field is going to be 225 divided by the distance 0 0.03. Seventy-five hundred units. Well, now I got two options. I can still go newtons per coulomb, but what's another way that I can apparently measure electric field? Volts per meter. Turns out that's newtons per coulomb in disguise. By the way, what would the voltage be right there, exactly halfway? Uh, One hundred and twelve point five. Half of that. What would the voltage be one centimeter in, one third of the way, uh, two, two thirds, actually, I should say, I should measure from this way, because here's zero. One centimeter in, which would be right there, would be 225 divided by three, whatever the heck that was. How does the electric field at the point X compare with the electric field at the point Y? So point X is right there, point Y is right there, how does the electric field compare? This is the beauty of parallel plates. The electric field there, 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 in any of those locations is the same. It's the same. And I'll convince you of that in just a second, but first I need to erase all those little charges that I threw in there for some reason. <coughs> Okay. First of all, what's the total electric field here? 500 is the total voltage divided by, what's the total distance? Uh, meters, please. 0 0.05, right? What's the, to what's the total voltage? Sorry, what's the total electric field? Someone actually do the math, please. 10,000? 10,000 volts per meter or newtons per coulomb. Now, what would the electric field at location X be? Well, how many volts have we gone through if we go 2 centimeters out of 5 centimeters and it's 500 volts? How many volts have we traveled through? 200? So the voltage right there would be 200 divided by, and how far are we, are we from the plate? 0 0.02 two centimeters. When you crunch that, you get 10,000 volts per meter. The only place E and it's not uniform is right near the ends, which is why televisions never looked perfect. If you ever wondered why they can't do a perfect screen with the old style TV, they could come close, but you could always tell there was some blur. Nick, really, here's what we're saying. Look up, kiddo. Let's suppose I put a charge right there, a positive charge. Which way would it want to move, Nick, left or right? What's the charge on this bar right here? To the right. Okay. Why? Well, it's really getting pulled by these negatives. Now, it is getting pushed by these positives, but is it very close to those positives? No. Nope. However, if I take this charge and I move it right to there, these aren't pulling it quite as strong. Oh, but these are pushing it a little more stronger because it's moved closer. In fact, if I move it right to here, well, now it's not getting pulled so much, but it's getting pushed even more. And it's a perfect balance. As soon as one of the pushes or pulls gets smaller, the other one gets correspondingly larger. And so that electric field, that pushing ability, uh, is constant throughout the whole place. What if we compare point charges? So example four says, 
how does the electric field at the point X compare with the field at point Y compare A and B? So here, we've already said the electric field is constant. And I could calculate it. It would be whatever V was divided by 0 0.05. What about here and here? Well, here we said that electric field was not equal to voltage divided by distance, like it was between plates. Here we said electric field was equal to KQ over R squared. Will this be constant? Well, let's see. If I move from X to Y, does my charge change? Nope. Does my radius change? Yep. In fact, the electric field at X is going to be bigger than the electric field at Y. Because as you move further away, Taylor, this is going to get smaller, as some of you found with electric field hockey. A few of you have already emailed me your scores or your, your screenshots. Still time. Uh, one student did it with 14 charges, which I think is the smallest I've I've had screen sent to me so far. I don't. Uh, I think it was fourteen. I counted. I think it's fourteen. I, I'll go back and double check. I got to count on the JPEG. But <coughs> okay. so most of the kids, most of the solutions that I've received so far have been the tunnel solution, which works. But I'm curious to see if you can figure out how to do it. Minimal amount of charges. Uh, explain your answer using principles of physics. I would then say. As R increases, E decreases. And I would probably write this over here and they'd be fine with it. Okay. At the bottom of the page, we have a bit of room. Draw yourself a nice vertical line. Well, two of them. Draw yourself two parallel plates, kind of like this. A little line. Okay. And we're going to make this positive. Let's say 500 volts. And we're going to make this zero. What would the electric field lines look like? Well, which way would the electric field lines point? To the left or to the right? Which way would the arrows point? To the right. And remember I said to you how far apart the lines are is how, far, uh, how strong the field is there. I want to show that the field is the same the whole way through. Here is what they would look like. Uniform lines even the same distance apart. In fact, you know what? I'm going to split the difference here. Except at the ends. You would find at the ends there would still be some positive charges that would kind of bend like that. You'd probably still get one good one there. You'd probably still get one good one there. But you would also find there was some bending. And it's this little bit here that gives TVs blur. We'll get more into how TVs work another day. Yep. Oh, you can actually, uh, with, with the old style cathode ray tube TVs, if you put a piece of tin foil across the screen and you clamp two wires on it, you can run stuff from it because it's all electrons coming off the screen. You can use it as a battery. It's also why those old-style TVs gathered dust so much, because the static dust would get attracted to it, just like balloons being rubbed on your hair to a wall. Uh, technical comment. We can see why the electric field is constant inside plates and why it varies with distance from a point charge if we graph voltage. So this would be the voltage between two parallel plates as distance changes. This would be the voltage between two point charges. 
This is a reciprocal graph for those of you who are in Math 12. All right, so for all electricity concepts so far, force field, potential energy, I made a connection to gravity to help us better understand the new idea. What's the gravitational analogy for voltage? Well, voltage, also called potential, which is energy per charge, is kind of like gravity potential, which is energy per mass. Because we noticed mass and charge appear in the same spots in our force equation. If we restrict our attention close to the Earth and ignore orbits, we can use PE equals MGH. You know what? Gravity potential is G times the height. Voltage is sort of like the height, uh, but it's also affected by how much charge is at that location because the more charge you have, the more you want to fall down. Gonna make it? Dylan, anytime you fall asleep, Brandon's eyes just naturally stray towards you, so it's pretty hard to get away with it, even though you're hiding behind Taylor. So back to our gravity analogy. With this analogy, you can think of a parallel plate voltage as a steady sloping mountain, a mountainside like that. And you can think of point charge voltage as a mountain that's kind of shaped like that in terms of the way the height changes. The voltage changes nice and steady. The voltage changes rapidly at first and not so rapidly later on. Thus, the field is uniform in parallel plates, and it changes around a point charge. In terms of direction, electric field is away from positive, higher voltage, and towards negative, lower voltage, which is sort of like downhill. Kind of. I don't know how much that analogy helps for you or whether it hurts you, but here are some questions for you to try, and I have a take-home quiz for you as well. Yeah. Yo. I decided to give it to you today. <coughs> you didn't get here on time. You need to be quiet. I wouldn't be saying a thing. I'm ready coming after you later. Number one. Number two. Number three. Uh, look very carefully at number three. What's your change in voltage? Not 255, 220, okay? That most parallel plates are not charged zero and one voltage. Most of the time, there's residual charges in both. But the net charges, the net volt is what we're talking about here. Uh, four is good. Five is good. Six is good. Oh, that's a wonderful review. So, so far I've given you one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to give you a take-home quiz. <clears throat> 